Chapter 27, Mike TV is sent by television. Mike TV was even more excited than Grandpa Joe at seeing a bar of chocolate being sent by television. But Mr. Wonka, he shouted, can you send other things through the air in the same way? Breakfast cereal, for instance? Oh my, cried Mr. Wonka, don't mention that disgusting stuff in front of me. Do you know what breakfast cereal is made of? It's made of all those little curly wooden shavings you find in pencil sharpeners. But could you send it by television if you wanted to, as you do chocolate, asked Mike TV. Of course I could. And what about people, asked Mike TV. Could you send a real live person from one place to another in the same way? A person, cried Mr. Wonka. Are you off your rocker? But could it be done? Good heavens, child. I really don't know. I suppose uh, it could. Yes, I'm pretty sure it could. Of course it could. I wouldn't like to risk it, though. It might have some very nasty results. But my TV was already off and running. The moment he heard Mr. Wonka saying, I'm pretty sure it could. Of course it could. It, he turned away and started running as fast as he could towards the other end of the room where the great camera was standing. Look at me, he shouted as he ran. I'm going to be the first person in the world to be sent by television. No, 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 cried Mr. Wonka. Mike, screamed Mrs. TV, stop, come back. You'll be turned into a million tiny pieces. But there was no stopping Mike TV now. The crazy boy rushed on and then he reached the enormous camera. He jumped straight for the switch, scattering Oompa Loompas right and left as he went. See you later, alligator, he shouted as he pulled down the switch, and as he did so, he leaped out into the full glare of the mighty lens. There was a blinding flash. There was silence. Then Mrs. TV ran forward, but she stopped dead in the middle of the room, and she stood there. She stood staring at the place where her son had been, and her great red mouth opened wide, and she screamed, He's gone! He's gone! Great heavens, he has gone, shouted Mr. TV. Mr. Wonka hurried forward and placed a hand gently on Mrs. TV's shoulder. We shall have to hope for the best, he said. We must pray that your little boy will come out unharmed at the other end. Mike, screamed Mrs. TV, clasping her head in her hands. Where are you? I'll tell you where he is, said Mr. TV. He's whizzing around above our heads in a million tiny pieces. Don't talk about it, wailed Mrs. TV. We must watch the television set, said Mr. Wonka. We, he may come through any moment. Mr. and Mrs. TV and Grandpa Joe and little Charlie and Mr. Wonka all gathered round the television and stared tensely at the screen. The screen was quite blank. He's taking a really long time to come across, said Mr. TV, wiping his brow. Oh dear, oh dear, said Mr. Wonka, I do hope that no part of him gets left behind. What on earth do you mean? asked Mr. TV sharply. I don't wish to alarm you, said Mr. Wonka, but it does sometimes happen that only about half the little pieces find their way into the television set. It happened last week. I don't know why, but the results... The result was that only half a bar of chocolate came through. Mr. TV loud a scream of horror. You mean only half of Mike is coming back to us? She cried. Let's hope it's the top half, said Mr. TV. Hold everything, said Mr. Wonka. Watch the screen. Something's happening. The screen had suddenly begun to flicker. Then some wavy lines appeared. Mr. Wonka adjusted one of the knobs and the wavy lines went away. And now, very slowly, the screen began to get brighter and brighter. Here he comes, yelled Mr. Wonka. Yes, that's him, all right. Is he all in one piece, cried Mrs. TV. I'm not sure, said Mr. Wonka. It's too early to tell. Faintly at first, but becoming clearer and clearer, every second the picture of Mike TV appeared on the screen. He was standing up and waving at the audience and grinning from ear to ear. But he's so tiny, shouted Mr. TV. Mike, cried Mrs. TV, are you all right? Are there, are, are there any t bits of you missing? Isn't he going to get any bigger, shouted Mr. TV. Talk to me, Mike, cried Mrs. TV. Say something. Tell me you're all right. I'm 
tiny little voice no louder than the squeaking of a mouse came out of the television set. Hey, Mom, it said. Hi, Pop. Look at me. I'm the first person ever to be sent by television. Grab him, ordered Mr. Wonka. Quick! Mrs. TV shot out a, shot out a hand and picked the tiny figure of Mike TV out of the screen. Hooray, cried Mr. Wonka. He's all in one piece. He's completely unharmed. You call that unharmed, snapped Mrs. TV, peering at the little speck of a boy who was now running to and fro across the palm of her hand, waving in the air. He was certainly not more than an inch tall. He's shrunk, said Mr. TV. Of course he's shrunk, said Mr. Wonka. What did you expect? This is terrible, wailed Mrs. TV. What are we going to do? And Mr. TV said, we can't send him back to school like this. He'll get trod upon. He'll get squashed. He won't be able to do anything, cried Mrs. TV. Oh, yes, I will, squeaked the tiny voice of Mike TV. I'll still be able to watch television. Never again, shouted Mr. TV. I'm throwing the television set right out of the window the moment we get home. I've had enough television. When he heard this, Mike TV flew into a terrible tantrum. He started jumping up and down on the palm of his mother's hand, screaming and yelling and trying to bite her fingers. I want to watch television, he squeaked. I want to watch television. I want to watch television. I want to watch television. Here, give him to me, said Mr. TV, and he took the tiny boy and shoved him in the bre breast pocket of his jacket and stuffed a handkerchief on top. Squeals and yells came from inside the pocket, and the pocket shook as the furious little prisoner fought to get out. Oh, Mr. Wonka, wailed Mrs. TV, how can we make him grow? Well, said Mr. Wonka, stroking his beard and gazing thoughtfully at the ceiling, I must say that's a wee bit tricky. But small boys are extremely springy and elastic. They stretch like mad. So what we'll do? We'll put him in a special machine I have for testing the stretchiness of chewing gum. Maybe that will bring him back to what he was. Oh, thank you, said Mrs. TV. Don't mention it, <coughs> said Mr. Wonka. How far do you think he'll stretch, asked Mr. TV. Mm, maybe miles, said Mr. Wonka. Who knows, but he's going to be awfully thin. Everything gets thinner when you stretch it. You mean, like chewing gum? asked Mr. TV. Exactly. How thin will he be? asked Mrs. TV anxiously. I haven't the foggiest idea, said Mr. Wonka, and it doesn't really matter anyway because we'll soon fatten him up again. All we'll have to do it, and we'll have to do is give him a triple overdose of my wonderful super vitamin candy. Super vitamin candy contains huge amounts of vitamin A and vitamin B. It also contains vitamin C, vitamin D, vitamin E, vitamin F, vitamin G, vitamin I, vitamin J, vitamin K, vitamin L, vitamin M, vitamin N, vitamin O, vitamin P, vitamin Q, vitamin R, vitamin T, vitamin U, vitamin V, vitamin W, vitamin X, vitamin Y, and believe it or not, vitamin Z. The only two vitamins it doesn't have in it are vitamin S because it makes you sick and vitamin H because it makes you grow horns out of the top of your head like a bull. But it does have in it a very small amount of the rarest and most magical vitamin of them all, vitamin Wonka. And what will that do to him? asked Mr. TV anxiously. It'll make his toes grow out until they're as long as his fingers. Oh no, cried Mrs. TV. Don't be silly, said Mr. Wonka. It's most useful. He'll be able to play the piano with his feet. But Mr. Wonka... No arguments, please, said Mr. Wonka. He turned away and clicked his fingers three times in the air. An Oompa Loompa appeared immediately and stood beside him. Follow these orders, said Mr. Wonka, handing the Oompa Loompa a piece of paper on which he had written full instructions. And you'll find the boy in his father's pocket. Off you go. Goodbye, Mr. TV. Goodbye, Mrs. TV. And please don't look so worried. They all come out in the wash, you know. Every one of them. And that's the end of chapter 27.